Muslim Brotherhood that is which is unforgivable. <laughs> he failed us. <laughs> we would like to see him implement democracy. But he failed. Why? Because the liberals, the Nasseris, the armies, the remnants of the origins, and some some quarter of Coptics. I'm not saying Coptics are Coptics, but those act the remnants of origin and also the elites, the elites, who used to enjoy a lot of privileges during Mubarak period. They're not enjoying anymore during Mursi. They're going to lose a lot of things. They're not going to get <coughs> projects. They're not going to get a lot of tenders from, from Mursi, unlike what they, they used to enjoy during Mubarak period. And they started complaining that, oh, we are deprived. We are being oppressed under Mursi. So, and coming back to Arifin's question about the geopolitics, one thing about uh, about the Morsi government in Egypt, not only you know, not only I give this analogy, the, the 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 Hindi movie, you know, the Hindi movie, normally a hero of a Hindi movie, he never fight. One to one. You will find 10 or 20 people. <laughs> and eventually, he also will win up. So, well, I don't get smiling, eh? <laughs> You're a big fan, maybe you get up. That's what normally happened. And this is the case of Morsi. He was not only fighting the army, who never support of him and keep conspiring against him, not only is fighting against the remnants of origin, not only is fighting the Nasiris, not only is fighting the elitists. Not only is fighting the non-democratic liberals. You know, by the way, there are two types of liberals in Egypt. I don't know which one your friend belongs to. But we have in those Rabah, along with the pro-democracy and pro-Morsi protesters, we have a lot of liberals who are democratic liberals, like those we have in GDM. <laughs> you know what? I, 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 I like this proposal just now. I mean, uh, George also mentioned that, that I think GDM should go to Egypt. <laughs> and meeting this uh, General CC and Morsi, if you're lucky enough to meet Morsi, explain to them your experience, your experiment, how different people, different religion, different culture, different races could sit together and agree to disagree and agree on some common ground. You know, when the other day I was asked by one of these VAP uh, parliamentarians, he, he said that, oh, how come this uh, uh, general is fighting again, but look, they are also Muslim one. <laughs> hey, it's not about Muslim or what, non Muslim one. <laughs> People fighting for power, I mean, they don't care. You Muslim, you don't Muslim, you know. It doesn't matter. When it comes to power, power is very colorless. <laughs> talk about power, you talk about economy, you know, right? Everything's about economy, you know. <laughs> it's very colorless, it's raceless, religionless. So, I think GBM experience needs to be shared <laughs> to the people of the world, especially to the Egyptians. Not only to the Brotherhood, but also to the Tamaru or the rebels. Not the army, like, the army never listened to you, know? they only listen to the Arab. <laughs> so, not only Mursi and Brotherhood, actually it's not only Brotherhood, because if you look, it was not true when people are saying that, oh, look, they're dominating the, the, the government institutions. No, not really. Out of the how many hundred go go governments you have? <coughs> Pardon? 28. Only 35 percent are brothers. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, the prime minister was a non-brotherhood member, and the cabinet consists of those centrist liberal, some centrist socialists, and Christians, and etc. I mean. I think that's the greatest sin of Morsi, being <laughs> nice, being too innocent. You want to jump on you cannot be innocent people. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. But that's why I refuse to jump on <laughs> No. Not only that, he also had to fight the external enemy. I have to mention it. Syria and Iran. You know, Bashar al-Assad, uh, al the one who's fighting his own people, killing women and children, old folks and innocent civilians. He was the most 
happy, I mean, the, the, the happiest people ever when Musi was ousted. <coughs> came up with statements, came up with overwhelming uh, public appearance of Musi ousted. Why? Because Musi supported his own people to, to bring democracy to Syria. And Iran, Iran was so happy with Musi. Some people might feel that, oh, Morsi is very pro Iran because he has beard just like Ahmadinejad. <laughs> it's not true. Iran is helping Bashar to kill his own people. While Morsi is helping or supporting Syrian people to uphold justice and to fight the dictator. Iran is so happy. That's why if you look, some of the statements made by, Iran, by the Iranian authority, they're not happy with Morsi. And since the very beginning, after the revolution on 35th January, what the what Khamenei, the, the Supreme Leader of Iran, said. He said that Egypt should emulate. No, sorry. What happened in Egypt actually was the fruit of <coughs> Iranian revolution. And then Muslim Brothers said, "We have no relation with Iran. <laughs> we, we are not crazy mullahs like that." And number two, Morsi is also facing the greatest enemy of the world. Yeah. <coughs> Israel. You know, one thing about, Israel, about the United States of America, why they cannot determine until now whether to call it a coup or not. The removal of Morsi, the democratically elected president from his post, whether it is coup, soft coup, or is it not a coup, the ratio of democracy, you know, those kind of things. Why? Because for America, they are concerned of two things in that region, in the Middle East and North. North, uh, North African countries. Number one, their economic interests, especially Suez Canal. And number two, is Israel, the security of Israel. Any threat to Israel is a threat to American foreign policy. <laughs> Any threat of, to Israel is a threat to White House. That's why for them, they're happy, mostly, for not being there. But to celebrate the coup, will go against their own interests. Why? Because how could they get the army and Egypt stick to them is through 1.5 or nearly 1.5 billion aid that they give to the army. It's not to the people by the way. Let's give it to the army. Without that, Egypt will never give their loyalty to America anymore. They need to give that. But it will go against their law, which this allows them to give aid to any countries which the government came into power to put it up. So, you know, this dilemma. But again, Israel was the second country who became very happy and very fond of the victory of the coup d'etat. We're talking about Syria and Israel, not to forget Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates. You know, United Arab Emirates has a very bad relation with Brotherhood. Why? If the time to agree with Morsi and with the democratic Egypt is giving a very wrong signal to his own people. I'm no longer needed in this country. You need democracy, then you have to dispose me. Because UAE, both UAE and Saudi is still ruled by an autocratic monarchy regime. By giving an endorsement to Egypt, democratic Egypt, Democratic elected uh, president is I mean, is cutting a lot of for them. They never want it to happen, and they are very happy to see the coup. So they say they are telling their people, yes, you want democracy, you have democracy. The very next day we do what PCC did to Morsi. That's why they really want the army and the new regime to remain, and they will never allow. Morsi or the people legitimacy to come back. And also, you know, talking about Saudi, UAE, you know, but it's very ironic looking at the US. They could accept an ultra conservative regime of Saudi Arabia and an autocratic monarch like UAE, but at the same time, they couldn't accept democ democracy or democratic. Uh, government like uh, Egypt. I think that's enough for now. I have a few figures 
to, to present here, but we will talk about it later, about the achievement of Mursi's government in terms of economy within one year. Yes, he failed to bring Egypt to become like Malaysia or Turkey, but at least he managed to raise up the GDP from 2% to, to uh, sorry, from I mean, 1.8% to 2.2% of the year 2012. With all the difficulties, with his both hands tied up, with all the you know defiance he received from everywhere, internal, external, but at least he managed to raise up the GDP. I think uh, basically that's end of round one. If uh, in the television, uh, you know, we have a commercial break actually. So, <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have that. I know it's difficult, some people would have called from their wives to go back or something. I, I don't think we'll have a commercial break. Now, um, what I want to do is this. I, I might want to open to the panel first, I think, two to three minutes. Maybe you want to comment about each other. I mean, that's a good start, I think. <laughs> But what I will do after that, I will open up for uh, discussion amongst the uh, audience. This is what happens when I normally go to forum. The person who is in my position, a moderator, don't allow me to talk. And the rest, I want to allow you to talk. Don't ask questions. Talk and ask questions. It's okay. So it's not going to be 30 seconds. You can talk for 3 minutes or 4 minutes. You know, that's fair. Because because it's not a question alone that you want to ask, because I know that in front of me, in front of us, there are a lot of clever, intelligent people, you know. So we want, we want to entertain that. And then let's ask, uh, the, 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 the panel may or may not answer, you know, it's up to them, you know. And then let's do it for the next half an hour. So I got a signal from the organizer, let's try to stop about 10, 30, 10, 14, and that sort of thing. Uh, Dr. Hala, can I start with you first? Please? What uh, George and Dr. Masby has mentioned. Would you like to make some comments first before I open up? Maybe you would like to add up to what you have presented earlier. For those who have just arrived, Dr. Anna is an academician lecturer in the UIE. His family is in Egypt, experiencing the day to day uh, you know, happenings in Egypt as well. He is a consultant as well and has a lot of work in the Middle East the Emirates, Indonesia, etc. Please welcome Dr. Thank you. Okay. Actually, I, uh, I want to highlight the idea of speaking every time about uh, Morsi has mistakes and this is why maybe he deserves what happened for him. Well, sometimes this is a logic. Uh, Morsi has mistakes and uh, so we, uh, we speak about the mistakes and after that, we can go about this. And also, uh, I thank Brother uh, uh, Dr. Masli when he speak about some points of defending. By the way, I didn't come today to defend anyone, <laughs> actually. I, I just came to share with you the right of a nation to have democracy. Actually, this is our right. We suffered from military rule for 60 years. And we suffered, really we suffered. When the military coup that was done by Jamal Abdel Nasser, 1952, Egypt, 52, like more than 60, maybe your independence, 1957, isn't it? So our independence by military coup by Jamal Abdel Nasser, your independence, independence came through negotiations. But our independence came through a brother coup by Jamal Abdel Nasser, 1952. From that time, from 1952, thousands of people were killed. Thousands of people were, were in jail. Thousands of people were in poverty. At the time when Abdel Nasser came, Egypt was very rich. At the time, we owe, or uh, British, Great Britain, should pay to Egypt 40,000 uh, pounds, sterling pounds, that be Egypt under the British, under the British have some debt on the British at the time. But after Abdul Nasser came, now we are in debt for every nation in the world. 
We are now in Egypt. Every boy, every child is born. He is. He has some debt on his shoulder about twenty-five thousand dollars. At this very up 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 per person. Per person. Mm -hmm. So you can see now what did this military coup make for us, and this is why we are now against it. We need to live as the people live. We need to taste freedom and liberty as the people taste it. This is very simple. And now I give my vote to Morsi. Morsi got 13 million votes plus plus. How come in one night you come and say, go to hell? I will take your president, I will put him in jail, thank you, go. No longer, the game is over. It is like, for example, you are a father and your son came to you and said, father, I have a weapon. And now you are no longer the father, you are no longer the leader of the house because I have the weapon, I am the leader because of the weapon. This is exactly what happened. So the weapon cannot give legitimacy for anyone. Legitimacy in democratic society only has one way. We should keep it. This is the idea. So our brother, <coughs> when we speak about uh, the women suffer, how can we speak uh, the suffer of a woman when the special advisor for Dr. Morsi, the political advisor of Dr. Morsi is a woman. Dr. Dr. Morsi chose his special advisor, the political advisor is a woman. The cabinet of Dr. Morsi has two Christian, has two Coptic in his in his cabinet. Where is five of Ikhwan, only five brothers who's there? That means the all others are from intelligentsia and the people who have known. So who can say women are suffering? Women, for your information, now, in the Rabi' al adawiyah many, many Coptic are there in the, sit in, inside Rabi' al adawiyah You can go to uh, YouTube, you can see many Coptic who are pro-Dr. Morsi and pro-democracy. One of them is Mr. Rami Jan. He is a journalist. I hope you can know him. He is a very famous journalist. He is Coptic, but he is pro-democracy, and he is a very strong supporter for Dr. Morsi. So the idea of Coptic are suffering under uh, uh, Dr. Morsi, I think this is a big lie for all the media, and we shouldn't believe it. Actually, you have to go, and I support the idea of Dr. Uh, Medley, I hope or if uh, GBM can make a journey now and go to, to have a trip and please go three or four of you and please go and this is, this is a very good thing and I invite you to go as soon as possible <laughs> to join in the streets then. Especially those from Pakuburantina. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of murders there, a lot of people were killed, so maybe you are thinking it also there. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali. I don't care if it's in some way I call you Dr. Morsi. Josh, I think we have a good discussion so far. I, I, I think uh, being a person who is in uh, Bangkok, and of course you make some comments about Jakarta and Indonesia. I, I, I'm quite close to Indonesia. We are close, you know. And this region has uh, its own upheavals as well. Marcos, Suharto, uh, of course Malaysia itself. And I, and I, I think this issue, and this is my, my deep feeling, I just want to share deep inside my heart. Sometimes when I look, I'm sorry, I've got to move on to, although that will be my last question to all the panels. This issue of election in Malaysia, sometimes I think there's a thing called politics poverty, politics of corruption. There is a reason why sometimes corruption is maintained. It, it helps Egyptian, 
Why the country is in poverty? It helps the army. It helps people are subservient to that system. Then, 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 then people will come and pull ransom the rakyat, no? the people. And, and this is really something very extremely naughty. Josh, would you like to make some comments on your piece of the Egypt? And again, use this as a weapon. I, I mean, I mean, this is something done. If you look, you look at Malaysia. I, I'm sorry, I got to be very personal here. Uh, despite the what one newspaper said. You know, when one particular race elects the opposition party, it's got nothing to do with it. It's just that one race, the Malays, you know, they belong to the other end of the poverty line. And they vote a certain, a certain party. And when I look at Egypt, you know, when Morsi come, how can Morsi solve the problem within 12 months? It's exactly, you know, the day that was anniversary of Morsi, it's, it's one year and one day, is it something like that? I mean, I mean, Tun Abdul Razak took Five, five year plan. Tun Raza and uh, Doctor, uh, sorry, uh, Tun Kuat Rahman. Five year plan, 25 years you know, to develop Malaysia. Five years. Times five. You know, Josh, any comment on that first before I move to uh, Doctor Madhu, please. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I, actually, I wasn't surprised when I uh, look at um, how Mosi dealt with the poverty issue because you have to understand, big one didn't appear overnight. Yeah. For all for the past so many decades, they've been you know oppressed by different regimes. Yeah, that's right, exactly. So like you know, they it's it's just like um, how the architect in in Turkey reinvented itself. It it didn't appear overnight. If you look back at the history of Islamic um, politics in Turkey, they had extensive networks in the rural areas, mosques, welfare organizations, and all that. So if one and and whether Refai in Turkey before or Akhape now, they operate more or less using the same model. Rural, you know, some extensive rural networks and uh, focusing on the welfare issues and all that. So I wasn't surprised with the result last year when Morsi actually won more than half of the vote to become president. And uh, of course I'm not here to defend or to criticize him, but I, but I, but I do think there are some uh, areas in his administration that should be improved. For example, like the engagement with civil society, right? Uh, especially non equine civil society and um, like it or not, I did meet several Coptic Christians who had no political background but who just happened to be targeted by so called the the extremist extremist um, uh, forces in, in, in Egypt, in Cairo and uh, specifically and um, these people they were not linked to the United States. For one, they will not be used by any Western um, Western countries to undermine uh, the Morsi government. But they did suffer, and they couldn't identify uh, the attackers. But when they reported the incidents and uh, to the authorities, no action was taken. No action was taken. That showed uh, a you know a, a lack of cooperation or or, or what um, a lack of coordination. Even when they were I know, I understand, yes, yes, exactly. So it's like, it, it, what, what I mean is like, that is why civil society is important. If you have a strong uh, coordination within society, you don't have to, you, you know, if something like this happened, other Muslims could have come to their rescue. And this wouldn't have become an international issue, and this, you could have saved this issue from being manipulated by countries that pitted against, uh, that pit against uh, Egypt like the United States. We all know that. This is not the first time that the US intervened, interfered so you know, publicly in, in Egyptian politics since 1951 when they overthrew, when, they, when a group of army officials overthrew the, 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 you know, the, 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 the royalty at the time. And the, the US already had very strong hand in Egyptian politics until today. So it's like there are areas that need to be improved. But what I'm saying is like poverty indeed is very, it, I think uh, mostly in this respect, he placed um, what is that, his agenda, he, he really shaped his agenda in, in the right direction. But what he lacked is um, he didn't, probably didn't have time to do the coordination, to do the engagement with society and all that. So all these issues that could have been dealt with, could have been handled properly, um, you know, became a, a big challenge for him. Uh, but I maintain my position is like regardless of whether you are for or against Morsi, dealing with him, getting rid of him through, 
for the military is not the right way. It's not the right way. And uh, we can see now there are more lives being lost on the streets in, in Egypt compared to um, early last month, compared to a month ago. So is that a, a, a price worth paying for? And we really need, need to ponder. So coming back to Malaysia, I think we also need to think, I agree, BAS is very good in organizing, mobilizing the, the rural voters. They're really looking, uh, taking care of the welfare of the population. But what, I'm, what I hope BAS would move a step forward is to allow the people to defer, even if I, today I receive welfare from, from BAS, but would I be allowed to speak differently from what BAS leaders say? I think BAS leaders has to move you know, you, you can't say that today I give you uh, this and this uh, assistance and then you, you must support my party. And then if you are doing that, you are no different from Amlo. You should have the gen generosity to allow, to empower people. Your purpose of helping these people is not to consolidate your own power, but to empower these people. Like what PSM is doing, Arun. Ah, yeah. <laughs> if you read Dr. Jayakumar's or Arun's writing and all that, you can see. And or, you know, although they lost in, in several seats, but they continue to serve the people because the very goal of uh, helping the people is to empower them, not to enslave them. Don't turn the voters, don't turn the people into your own slaves or ideological, or I, would, I would call it ideological slaves, like what Amno is doing, what MCA is doing, exactly that. They want people to be their slaves, listening to them, beholden to them, never challenging their authority, in return for material gains. No, this is not right. And I really do hope BAS would rise to the challenge and become a party for all, not only for Muslims, but for all Muslims. But for them to do that, I think they, I think they have acquired a lot of, uh, they have made a lot of achievement, a lot of progress. And uh, we, can, we can see a lot of, at least I personally know that a lot of my Chinese friends are openly supporting BAS. So this is a very significant achievement. But you have to build on this achievement by allowing, giving people the right to think differently from you. And that is the real test of democracy for us, as far as I can see. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to just uh, give uh, Dr. Masli just three minutes. Sorry, okay, I'd like to open for the public. You know. I, I'm, 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 I'm a bit baffled by the media reports. Like, for instance, BBC yesterday reported the issue here is the thousands versus the millions. You know? Thousands seems to be supporters of Muslim Brotherhood, and millions seem to be supporters of General Sisi. And of course, and of course, what really happened on the ground? The press seems to be telling us a lot of stories which are we, we, we do not know for real. What was it on the ground? Maybe you can enlighten us from your visit as well, uh, Dr. Masri, that you the time that you had experience over there, uh, and then from the news that you have on on, on this call. Yeah? You can take up the issue. Okay. Uh, before I answer the question, I mean, I would like to draw upon an issue in Tunisia. You did mention about Tunisia. Uh, the current government of Tunisia is a coalition government, a mixture of the Islamic uh, Nada Party, led by Rajiv Ganushi, and other centrist liberal party. Uh, Nada was accused of depriving women's right. They say that, oh, uh, this Islamic party is against women, against women's rights, they are very, uh, you, know, uh, get, uh, you know, very biased, etc. But the fact that 49 parliamentarians, uh, 49, out of 49 women parliamentarians in Tunisian parliament, 42 of them are from Nada party. Women. 42 women from the whole of 49 women representatives in Tunisian parliament come from the Islamic Nada party. So, let, let us come back to Tunisia. Okay, talking about this, uh, this incident in, in, in Egypt, yeah, I, I wouldn't deny that there are a lot of cases, not only in, in Cairo, but also in, in uh, Luxor and also in uh, Alexandria and a few other places where uh, the Christian Coptics were intimidated, but they were not intimidated by the Muslim Brotherhood. That is for sure. And even after, when a lot of cases have happened, I think when, when, when somebody put 
one of the Coptic church in Puasen. Mursi came on the very night, not only condemning, but saying that any, uh, you know, any violence against church, against Christians, is also violence or uh, is, is also an abuse or violence against myself and against brotherhood. You know, and, and you know, he has to pay a very high price for that. The radicals and the extremists are accusing him of being too liberal by accepting Christian to be part of himself. And that is the situation. And you know, never ever happen the officials from the government participated in the Christmas carol and Christmas celebration of the Coptics like what the Ikhwan did after they won the election, after Mosi came into power. They sent their representative to be part of the Christmas Mass in, 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 in the biggest uh, church of uh, Coptic. So that's what happened. But, but, I would like to remind you of three elements in Egypt that caused all this tension. Number one, the media. <laughs> Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> 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 That headline only appear, only appear maybe once a month, but in Egypt every night. This terrorist is condemning Christians. This Christians is against this. Mahina Islam, this and that. What will happen to the community like that? <laughs> For Muslim brothers, they will never be radicalized because they, they always adhere to their principles. Even their founder, Hassan al-Banna, the very founder of Muslim Brotherhood, has told Muslim Brotherhood members until the end of the day, never touch the Coptics. Why? Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu peace be upon, upon him, has a very specific saying that the Coptics are our brothers. As he that. Christians. Christians are our brothers. And never abuse them. Anybody who abuse the Bimi or, or, or the, the, the non muslim who are living with us, they are also abusing me. That was the prophet said. Muslim brothers always adhere to that. But, but, mind you, there are radical elements in the community. I would like to suggest you guys to watch two films in order to understand the Egyptian community. Maybe Dr. Allah would agree with me, but that is how I normally explain to my students for them to understand the dynamic of the politics in Egypt before the election and also to understand it after the, you know, before the revolution and also after the revolution. The first movie is Emara Yaqubian by Ala Aswan. <laughs> they share the same name. Ala Aswan, uh, 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 I mean, a famous novelist. You know, I might disagree with, with the whole film, but at least they, he tried to portray the, the, the the, the, the fragments of the Egyptian community from this point of view. And number two is a comedy movie, which is very famous by Ahmad Hermi, uh, Asad Aswad. Uh, it means the, the black honey. And Mara Yaqubian uh, means uh, the apartment of Yaqubian. It, 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 it was initially a novel that been translated into a movie, and the movie has English subtitles. You just Google it or order it from Amazon.com, and then maybe you could. Uh, and don't look at contouring and <laughs> So that, that will help you in, in order to understand the, the nature of Egyptian society. But, but again, you would understand that there are few of the extremists, and those extremists are beyond the control of the government. Okay. And to make things worse, the security force is not helpful, not to the Christians, not to the Brotherhood, not even to